Welcome to How to Save Your Marriage with Nicola Beer, a full show of tips and practical strategies to repair, rebuild, and strengthen your relationship. If you are currently stuck, wondering if your marriage can be saved, or you know you want to save it but don't know how to go about changing it, this show is for you. To book your free marriage strategy session with Nicola, get the free marriage ebook or donate. If you are enjoying the show and want to help keep it flowing, visit www.nicolabeer.com. Hi and welcome. I'm so happy you're here. Today I'm going to be talking to you about human connection, health and happiness. We are living in a time where human connection is quickly being replaced by technology. Interactions and conversations occur more online than in person. It is easier to send a message on Facebook, put up a tweet on Twitter, or send a direct message on Instagram or WhatsApp. But is this the best way for humans to interact? Or are we built to thrive with human touch and real human connection? If you think of a newborn baby and the intimate relationship with his or her mother, you will understand how important that human touch and connection is from the beginning. A baby cannot use words to communicate. It needs its mother. And a mother can innately understand a baby's signal of unhappiness or contentment. Whether it's responding with a cuddle or feeding, a mother knows what her baby needs. This requirement of human interaction continues through our lives in different ways. For example, needing a hug after a long day at work or wanting to go for a walk with your best friend when you're feeling low. We crave that human interaction. I love this quote by Joe Strange. Human connection is the most vital aspect of our existence. Without the sweet touch of another being, we are lonely stars in an empty space, waiting to shine gloriously. That's what he really believes, that we really do need human connection, and we're lonely without that, which many agree. Researchers, in fact, around the world have studied the impact of social human connection on health and the results are worrying for today's society. One telling study showed that the lack of social connection is a greater detriment to health than obesity, smoking and high blood pressure. On the flip side, strong social connection leads to a 50% increased chance of longevity, according to Sapala 2012. Human connection is a unique interaction that gives us the power to uplift one another, build levels of trust and contentment. It is, therefore, no surprise that connecting with humans in person reduces the level of anxiety and depression, conditions that are difficult to overcome alone. Words of comfort online or via text message cannot replace the comfort you get when someone is supporting you in person, listening to you offload looking you in your face, being there when you want to cry and share your worries, holding you in their arms. We often hear people say that there are no words to express something. However, there are always actions that can express what we feel towards something or someone, whether it's a gesture like a hug, holding hands or a facial expression. Showing empathy or kindness can make such a difference. All the things which words cannot offer. Think back to a time where you'd gone for a walk to the local grocery store and struck up a conversation with a complete stranger, whether it's with one of the workers or another customer. It felt good. It feels good. Think how you felt on your way back home. Even the simplest morning greetings or helping someone pack their bags, showing someone where something is, giving directions can do so much for our self-esteem and happiness when we're greeted with a smile and a friendly face. There is a feeling of contentment you get when you interact with others, whether you're waiting at the post office, at a store in the queue. Striking up a conversation with a stranger can sometimes make your morning or your day. And when you replace these interactions with computers or mobile phone screens, you're reducing the opportunities of experiencing that feel-good factor. Sipala, 2012, that I mentioned earlier, really supports this with her studies. And she concluded that social connection has been generally associated with declines in physical and psychological health, as well as a higher proportion 
and propensity to anti-social behaviour. So a higher propensity to anti-social behaviour that leads to further isolation and the higher proportion of people engaging in isolating acts. And I can really relate to this myself because I know that in the past when I felt really lonely, rather than go and be with people because I felt lonely, I isolated myself even more and engaged in habits which kept me even more isolated. I went through a really stressful financial time, a really stressful time in my work, and I ended up drinking every night. And it just became a habit. I would drink alone on my balcony for several hours every evening, and further isolating me. And then I wanted to just be with the alcohol. I really was seeking connection, and I got that connection with myself using alcohol. And when I stopped that habit, I then actually replaced it with food and ended up grazing all night. So we we can adapt these habits which make us feel more and more isolated. And what I really needed was to get out the house and go and interact with other people, be with other people. And I'll talk about some ideas later about that. So let me ask you a question. When you're having a bad day, do you turn to movies? Do you turn to unhealthy habits? Do you turn to social media? Do you message other people? Do you scroll Facebook? Do you scroll Instagram? And have you ever wondered why you do this? Have you ever wondered why you turn to watching people or interacting on social media? It's often because we're really wanting that connection. It's actually human nature to want to socialise and interact with other people. And I am an introvert. And so sometimes I can say to myself, well, I'm an introvert, I'll just shut myself away. But after a while, you can feel like you're going crazy without that human interaction. Living such busy lives means that movies and social media is an easier way of seeking human interaction, but is it actually giving us what we really need? Is it giving us that connection that we crave for? Sadly, it's not possible for technology to replace that human energy, or maybe you'll say that's great, it's not replacing that human energy, and we still need to get out there and do it. Because we can feel the energy around us from others and when we do that it feels really, really good. Brene Brown, who is an expert on talking about isolation and shame, she specialises in social connection and she states that a deep sense of love and belonging is an irresistible need of all people. That we are biologically, cognitively, physically and spiritually wired to love and to be loved and to belong. And when those needs are not met, we don't function as we're meant to. This further reinforces the idea that we need human interaction to thrive as human beings. There is something incredibly uplifting when you're receiving support from those around you. However, this is also the case when you are the person offering the support. Human interaction is so powerful that it has the ability to positively impact both the person who is feeling low and the person who is supporting the other. The more positive people you have around you, the more positive your outlook will be in life. To fully understand the importance of human interaction or connection, I want to just highlight again the detrimental impact on your health that can happen when you're socially isolated or lacking human interaction. For example, studies show that people who are lonely are higher at risk of suffering heart disease, cancer and stroke. And they're probably more likely to engage in habits like I did that then end up keeping them lonely. Furthermore, elderly people who are lonely are likely to die at twice the rate of someone who is socially active and surrounded with human interactions. So I'm going to give some ideas now of ways to increase your social interaction or connection with those around you. The first is really to make a conscious effort to walk to the grocery store if you are living alone or you're not connecting with those that you live with and I'll talk about more about that in a moment. So building up positive connections with people around you. So just going and interacting with customer service staff whether that's in a restaurant or a store can have a positive lifting effect. Joining groups in your local community to build on your hobbies which will help you build social groups with people that have similar interests can be a really beneficial thing to do. You've got online meetup.com, which has meetup groups all around the world in so many cities now. You can see if there's anything going on in your area, 
And if there's not, then perhaps you could create your own meetup group, your own walking group, your own whatever interest or passion you have group. You could also, when you're having a bad day, make an effort to really reach out to your close friends or family members by calling them. You don't need to talk about you or your situation if that's putting you off calling or reaching out to others. You can ask them questions about themselves or you can do an activity together so that you're not talking but you're feeling their presence, their comfort, their companionship. You could also set some time aside to join some group activities. So I mentioned exercise could be a great one meditation, something that boosts your mental health but also could encourage you to meet with like-minded people and do something good for your physical body as well and your mental body as well. So doing something like that. And one of the easiest ways to make sure that you have enough interaction with others is to make sure that you set yourselves, I think, in your calendar, lunch dates, breakfast dates, dinner dates, rather than just going on social media or not planning anything. So when I first started my business, working at home alone a lot, learning all about creating podcasts and marketing and things like that, I felt a bit lonely. And so then I just planned, okay, at least every other day I'd meet someone for a coffee, someone for lunch, I'd go to the yoga studio, just making sure that I was doing something to get myself out of the house because even though I do absolutely love my own company I do feel like I'm going crazy after more than say a day completely alone maybe two days alone then I feel like right I really need to interact and then of course if you have those that you're living with interacting with those I'm working a lot with people at the moment who are struggling in their marriage and they're not communicating they're not smiling at each other they're not hugging They're like ships in the night passing. And this can be really difficult. I also work with a lot of couples that have long distance relationships. And I've got a program that helps couples if they've got a long distance relationship, if they're split up during the week or for months, if they're living in different countries. Having been an expat now for 13 years, it's something that I deal with helping couples to really become closer with that distance. And I highly recommend to couples in this age of WhatsApp where things might be misunderstood through just text messaging, to really pick up the phone as much as possible. And if it's not possible to pick up the phone, then leaving voice messages for each other. Voice notes can convey a lot more love, kindness, understanding and connection than just a text message. And also sharing photos. This is a lovely thing to do as well, to really boost that if you are going to rely on social media and text messaging. But ideally you want to be around each other. And this is something that I get asked all the time with couples that start living in separate bedrooms. I know when I was in my relationship years ago now, we really started the habit of separate bedrooms and then this just became more and more of a habit. And the more research I read about it, that it really has so much benefit in connecting a couple when you lie next to each other. Even if you're not touching not being intimate, being in the same rhythm of breath, being in the same space physically can connect a couple because everything is really energy. We carry with us our energy and so if we can carry positive energy towards someone that you love, this is going to benefit your relationships. So really what I wanted to get across is that social interaction, human connection really, really matters and it also affects the brain productivity, which is really amazing. It affects the brain's productivity when we're engaging with other humans and the ability to release feel-good hormones. That we don't actually release these hormones, according to research, when we're isolated or alone. So a really interesting study explains a powerful way human connection affects our brain and our ability to feel good when helping someone. Couples were brought into a lab And the girlfriend in this study, so I call it girlfriend and boyfriend, was placed inside a brain scanner while the boyfriend sat in the chair next to her. In some cases, the boyfriend would receive a painful electric shock. The girlfriend who knew when her boyfriend was being shocked was instructed to either hold her boyfriend's hand or to hold onto a small ball. When the scientists looked at the girlfriend's brain's activity, 
they found that her reward system was active when she was holding the hand of her boyfriend, both when he was being shocked and when he wasn't in any pain. But it was most active when she held his hand when he was being shocked. So basically her brain was responding to holding her boyfriend's hand when he needed her. It felt good. And even when he didn't need her, she was still holding his hand. And it was especially meaningful when you know that your loved one needs your love and affection. So giving love and affection when your husband or wife, if you're married, needs that love and affection is really, really good for you. And likewise with any other close family member. And maybe this is something to bear in mind as well, is that it's often when people are horrible to us, when people are confused, when people are hurting, when people are angry and negative, that they need our love more. People who are hurt need love. It's in these times when we can show that and we'll also benefit. We feel a sense of contentment, even in worst situations, if we know we are supporting someone who's going through something difficult, is basically what this is saying. So whilst your main intention is to help them, you're also often building self-confidence and happiness within yourself. See how rewarding human connection can be? Are you convinced to really go out and hug someone right now? This is what I've started doing, actually. I really enjoy hugging, and so I now make a lot more concerted effort whenever I see people just to go straight for a hug. And of course, some people don't like it. They step back. Uh, Hopefully, I'm not too intimidating, and I just smile or laugh it off. But I just really enjoy it. There are many reasons why some people may not be comfortable, of course, trusting others to engage in social interactions. For example, a, a difficult childhood that is tainted the value of human connections. A lot of people are guarded because of a negative childhood or negative past relationships. If people have been to any kind of trauma, of course, that's going to make them feel a bit scared. So, of course, do what you are comfortable with. Researchers state that our brains are forever evolving, so it is possible to change this. Our brains are often always evolving, so any patterns or difficult memories can be released. And this is something that I really love to do and help people with help them to release old patterns help them to release trauma or negative memories if they're willing to and it doesn't have to be a painful process this is a misconception you don't have to go over and over it you don't even have to share it with some of the processes that I do it's just about relaxing people and telling them that they feel safe they feel secure they love themselves because any patterns of difficult memories can be released, allowing us to create secure, loving and healthy relationships with those around us. Another factor to consider is the type of people we choose to interact with that can affect the energy that we receive and our desire to continue connections with those people. For example, if you're surrounded by negative, unhappy people all the time, you're more likely to withdraw and become isolated and unhappy yourself. However, if you interact with people who have a more positive outlook in life and want to do things to build others up, you will be inclined to adapt these positive behaviours and become a happy, healthier you. And that's really important to bear in mind because we are responsible for the energy that we bring in. And in the Empowered Love audio programme, it talks about how to really transform a marriage using energy and more than actually talk about it actually gives you practical steps you can take on a daily on a weekly monthly basis to increase your levels of energy your energies of love of positivity and of positive connection between a couple so I highly recommend if you're looking to enhance your marriage and you want something you can just quickly download and get into the right actions that's available and I also have my self-love audio program which is focusing on really loving yourself, getting into actions to love yourself, creating a self-love sanctuary, doing things to boost your sexual energy, your positive energy, your creative energy, all of these kind of different energies. It talks about how to do some actions to really enhance your life. Because we can all say oh, we need to love ourselves more, but how do you actually do that? And it means more than just going and get your nails done, or obviously guys probably wouldn't do that, but it means more than going and getting a haircut. That's a nice thing to do, 
But actually, self-love is all about the actions that you take, the boundaries that you set, and the words that you say to yourself. If you're telling yourself that you're no good, that people don't really like you, that you haven't achieved much, if you're comparing yourself to others, this all really can affect our whole overall well-being and this then energy, even if you're negative towards yourself, you're negative on your own life, you're negative on your own achievements, bringing that negativity energy into the home is going to impact those around you, which is why it's really important for children if parents decide that they are going to stay in their marriage to be happy for the children. If you're going to stay together for the children, be happy for the children, be positive for the children, do whatever you can to create that love energy in your household. And especially if you're dealing with teenagers that are going through a lot. I often get asked by parents if I can work with their teenagers and I really enjoy doing that. And what I find is their negativity often is creating more negativity And it could be from the parents' negativity or it could be from the outside. And we all can really feel each other's energy. So taking responsibility for your own energy is a really great thing to do. And that's why I always also give meditations to anybody that I work with. I give them guided meditations that they can just listen to at night or in the morning. That boosts their self-love, self-confidence, self-esteem. That help them to forgive and let go. To feel more positive. Sometimes people want exercise motivation or motivation to get things done. Often I'm meeting a lot of people these days who are annoyed because they're starting things and not finishing things. And this is really bugging them. And so this can also create negativity. So how is your energy? That's the other thing to really consider when we're looking at human connection. So I hope this has been interesting for you. It really is in our DNA to connect with others. And it's so important more now than ever because of the amount we use our phones. So taking a break from the phones is really key. A lot of people now take the phone to their bathroom with them. I've had couples argue saying that they hate it and yet it's become such a commonplace thing to do. And there's really nothing more rewarding rewarding and exciting than the positive exchange of energy between two loving and caring humans. I just absolutely love hugging. Everyone I meet now I hug. And sometimes, yeah, people find it too much. I may have mentioned this, but I just really enjoy it. So just start to start today. Be more affectionate. Be more affectionate with yourself. Be more affectionate physically with others. And be kind to yourself with the words that you say. And do something today or this weekend coming to boost your energy. And from my heart to yours, take care. Have an awesome day or evening ahead whatever time it is for you i can't wait for you to join me next week bye thank you for listening to how to save your marriage with nicola beer to book your free marriage strategy session today you can visit www.nicolabeer.com where you can also get the free marriage fixing ebook request a topic for the show and make a donation if the show has been of benefit to you and you want to help keep it going We wish you an amazing love-filled day ahead.